Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. We've been kind of MIA as far as the RV biz goes. Hoping to get on it today and work on the bathroom itself. But before I do that, I need to go ahead and clean this up a little bit, sweep up the floors, just take care of a few things. Just get it back in nice and neat order. It's easier to work on things when they're clean. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. See the bedroom's pretty much cleaned out for the most part. Just gotta put things back, put some paneling back there and up top. We gotta address that. But this is it so far. And then I'll be removing the toilet, taking the rest of the vanity out, and replacing that flooring down there, which hopefully shouldn't be too bad. And then we're just gonna leave the shower the way it is, just clean it up a bit, and hopefully it'll make it feel a little bit more complete. Alright, so that's a little bit better. Looks a lot cleaner. Looks cleaner in the camera than it does in here. But yeah, makes me feel a little bit better. Now, looking back into this paneling, since there was nothing to secure it to, it is starting to bow out. But when we put our, our trim and everything up, you know, hopefully it'll secure it. Put a piece of trim here first because there's somewhere to screw to. And then push it as tight as we can to this wall and it should keep it from bowing. And then piece of trim over the seam and attach it to that side. And then around, of course around the window as well. Everything should be good. And there's that old crazy dog. Yeah, talking to you, talking to you. But yeah, that's pretty much it so far. Now let's get to the bathroom. That'll be the last floor section for the main floor. Like I said, we still gotta rip this out. Got a good amount of water damage back here. I think that's the frame. It's, I can push it up here is fine i think there was a leak up here at the top somewhere because you can see there's a lot of water damage right there but we'll get that taken care of next is to take care of this this will be fun can't really even step in here huh? it's a little sturdier now but let's see where we can hang it at. all right we'll start with taking off this toilet it's like two bolts on each side grab a pair of pliers i think these are put together like a standard toilet but they just don't give you enough room to work on them though once you got it unbolted you reach back here in the supply line, like so, loosen it up, that's it, it's ready to come out. Careful, there may be a little bit of water in there. So that toilet will not be coming back in. We've decided to upgrade. Got some random things sitting back here, that looks like a pressure regulator. Our unit, our shower valve is built into our cabinet, so these two lines right here are running over to the cabinet to the shower valve. I'm gonna try to save that shower valve or see if they have one identical and replace it with that. This is for our sink. I'm gonna have to replace the gaskets and whatnot on that. That's the vent, Studer vent. We'll need to make sure we hold on to that. This RV seems to use ABS piping for the drain. That's all fine and dandy. We'll go ahead and keep that piping down there for auxiliary shower. We're gonna go ahead and keep that so when we wash the chibs, we can do that outside. That vent's gonna go, since we're not using the original. The original AC. Get that out of there. I'm gonna grab a Sawzall so I can cut that out. Be right back. All right, now that that's out of the way, as you can see, Step in here, very spongy. The floor is pretty much just given away at this point. All right, so for these shower valves, basically the only thing holding them in on the back is these little plastic nuts. You just gotta get your finger in there and unscrew them. Kind of like how the old school kitchen faucets were screwed on with these plastic nuts from below. This is essentially the same thing. Done. Now come out like that. I got it cleaned out. Battery's about to die. I don't think it's going to be as difficult as I thought it was going to be, but I think it's going to be harder than I expected, if that makes any sense. I already started peeling it up a little bit. I got to take that flange off. I'm going to save that just in case. And then I'm going to try around the corners and get all that flooring out. And I'm hoping that there's some sort of support underneath that I could put down two by fours like I did in here. I got to try to get it to go under the wall here. 
If it wasn't the water, it was termites or something. I don't know what that is. Is that roach, is that roach crap in there? Sure, but there's a big old pile of it. I gotta get all this filled. Mostly this, this part right here. That shouldn't be a problem. If baseboard will cover this right here. But I just gotta get most of it supported because the toilet's going there. And there's nothing supporting that toilet right now. It's like it's just bouncing on the uh, the tank. Can't tell, that tank might be full. So wood fell, fell down there, so that's, that's great. But so far, so good. I'm gonna throw the battery on the charger and hopefully by the time it gets somewhat charged up, I have as much of this floor up as I can get because I wanna get this done today, today. All right, so we have the floor ripped out. Here's our issue. I need to get a hold of an inside cutter from my boss to cut that flange up, because I'm thinking that's the only way. Does it go straight down to the tank? Second problem was there's no support right here. And every time that I push that damn thing, it blows up that nasty tank stink. But I found here is a metal support beam. Underneath there is a metal support, but I'm not touching that. Everything's good under there. And there's a metal support beam here. No, I mean, I can still stand on here, ain't heard nothing. But down here, underneath the wall, there's aluminum for the framing. So my thoughts here, I got one here to show you. I run a two by four under, fasten it to this plywood. Come over here, drill a couple of pilot holes down to this piece and attach it there. And then attach, attach it from the outside of the house into the two by four this way. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay the rest of my two by fours and attempt to get them secured if I can find the right drill bit. Hopefully I do. All right, so I got a little overhead view. Sup. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go ahead and lay my floor joists down. These are in no way perfect floor joists. I mean, they're measured, but I mean, they'll come up short. I found that I need to put the last one first because I gotta kind of go in at an angle so they fit underneath the plywood. There, smack it all the way over to the corner and all the way to the wall there. This one right down here and evenly space them like so. Once I get this flange taken out, I'm gonna run two by four underneath to kind of brace it up a little bit. Other than that, I think that should take care of it. And then, we'll, of course, we'll lay our plywood down, down up top. I cut out the drain line just to get it out of the way for now. I mean, it's ABS. You can't buy the stuff anymore. They don't sell it. I'll just use some no-hub bands. It's good, to be a, it's good to be a plumber when it comes to these things. Know what you're doing. That one's already secured in. So I'm going to go ahead and secure them. Go ahead and secure them here. And then I'll look for the drill bit to screw in here, there, and there. I'm not using anything fancy. It's a drywall screws. Push up from the bottom. Yeah, not using anything fancy, just drywall screws. They'll work. So far so good. I may or may not just put a couple pieces in between just, just to say it did. Or just run an entire other 2x4. Just in case you're wondering, that's what I'm using. Two and three quarter tech screws. All right, so it's all secured in. Very stiff. I think I'm gonna go ahead and call it a night. What are you doing? What do you think you're doing? Who are you? Who do you belong to? We really don't know whose dog that is. It just kind of showed up and started playing with Chip and Maggie. But other than that, that's about it for the day. See if I can't work on it a little bit tomorrow after work. Tomorrow's Friday. Go inside. Spend some time with the wife and just relax. It was nice being able to work on this and get it semi more done. I feel like we'd feel a lot better once this thing is, uh, at least the bathroom floor is in. Then that way to make it feel a little bit more complete. Because after that, it's really just little odds and ends. I think it makes it a lot easier once the floors are done. We can start working on walls and ceilings. See, we haven't done nothing with those. And then that front room. We're just doing what we can while we can. That'll be it for tonight. I'm gonna go take a shower and relax and enjoy some time with my bud. All right guys, so now it's Sunday, the day that you'll be watching this, but much earlier in the day. I threw the bucket of damper in here and it dried it out really. That smell is gone for the most part, that wet, mildewy, musty smell. If you can tell, I've got some bad allergies going on or something. Sick of it, I took some Claritin, didn't do nothing for me yesterday, but we're just gonna deal with it today. I'm trying to get this flange out. I've done a little bit of research, but from what I understand is most of them are glued in or screwed in. So I'm gonna try, I hope that this is the screwed in one because I do not want to cut this thing. And I'd like to at least either reuse it or get a new one that is like this one. So I'm gonna try to set you up here to where I can see it, to where you can see it as well. 
So we're gonna try to unscrew this thing. Basically just got two things here. Just try to work back and forth on each other. Big old B, if you can hear that buzzing. It needs to get the heck up out of here is what it needs to do. Oh man, that sucker's huge. So now I'm just gonna try to spin this thing out of here. I've seen people take a 2x4, they'll put it across, and they'll just screw it to the flange itself. And that is how it's done. You can see it's screwed in right into the tank. It's threaded. That's a good, good thing. So now I can put my floor over top here, and then I'll go back and I'll take my measurements, and I'll go back and cut out the hole, and then we'll pop our flange back in when we're ready. All right, so as you saw, I just cut my outside measurements. It was 40 from here to there, and then 34 and a, uh, three quarters from here to here. We have a tank vent right here that runs up through this wall. I'm thinking about taking that out completely and rerouting that vent underneath into the side, or just putting a studer vent of some sort like it had originally. I think I'm gonna go with that. I mean, we're still gonna put that back originally because that's like in a house, you have to have that stack or vent. That way, when you flush a toilet, it needs air to be able to go down into your sewer system. I believe it's the same thing here, but we have a vent here. There was a vent in line with that. And then back here, we have another vent, which I believe is for the other tank. So instead of running the stack or vent back through the ceiling, I think we're just gonna put a studer vent in the wall or just have it open the same way as this was done because you need that air for things to escape. I've got to try put my piece of wood through the bottom. You see how we're missing the bottom there? I'm gonna to have to cut that edge out because I mean, we gotta replace this anyway. I think this just comes off. Yeah, it just comes off. It's just a cap that goes over the top of everything. As far as your plumbing goes, down there at the bottom, through the floor, you have two ports it's to drain the entire system. You got your main line coming in, tees down. That's for both hot and cold to drain. There's another one back there. Then it comes off to your sink and your shower. For the cold, it branches off over here for the toilet. We're gonna put a shutoff valve in there as well. That's for the outside shower, auxiliary showers, what they call it. We're gonna get rid of that. Then all your plumbing runs underneath, comes over. This is where your water heater is supposed to sit. Disconnected the supply lines there, but that goes for the kitchen. Then underneath here, you have your holding tank, storage tank for your water. You can see down there, that is the pump for when you're using water out of this tank. We'll most likely never use that tank. Since this will all be stationary, it'd be just like a mobile home. So I need to cut those down there, cap them, so I can slide my plywood underneath. And I still don't know what I want to do, because I kind of need it out of the way to be able to slide the wood in. Because I can't slide it from that direction because of the pipe. You'll see what I come up with. Alright, so I'm going to cut and cap those lines. And I don't know if y'all know this. I am a plumber in the state of Florida. I'm about to use something that I do not like 100%. I think it has its place. And this is one of them. But this here, this is called a shark bite. Let's see if we can't focus on it. This is a shark bite. It's like a barbed fitting on the inside. And you just press it and connect it. This is a cap for a half inch line, DPVC, PVC, or not PVC, don't use it on PVC, um, copper, anything like that. We got PEX here, and that's what we're going to use it on. This, in my mind, is a temporary fix. This is just to cap the line off while I get everything done, and then I'll put the proper connection. These are crimp rings, PEX crimp rings. They use a tool. The tool is between 40 and 150 bucks. I had the $100 one. If you're going to use shark bites, do not bury them. I've seen plenty of times where people would bury them. Six months later, we were called out because they deteriorate in the ground. More so up north, where the soil is very acidic. So here we have our drain ports, and this pipe is really flexible. As you can. So I'm gonna pull up as much as I can, just enough to where I'll eventually be able to get a coupling back on it. Just like that. You take your shark bite, it's got a little insert that's gonna go inside the pipe. And then the plastic, you take that, take both sides, push it on as tight as you can. Shark bites do spin, so if you use couplings and stuff like that, they will spin, they hold pressure. 
We're gonna do the same for the other side. Take your little cutters, water drains, hold it and push. Now it doesn't push on a little bit, it does push on a lot. There are gauging tools and stuff like that. So what this does is it allows me to raise it up so I can put my floor and then later on I'll be able to cut my holes or drill my holes back in the floor, back in the floor and be able to put these back together. Of course, they might be shark bites because I do not have my tool anymore. But if it's gonna leak, it's gonna leak underneath and I'll be able to tell very quickly. All right, so now that, that plumbing part is figured out, I think everything fit so that we can get our plywood. Trying to save this plastic piece that goes over the threshold there. I'm just gonna cut on the back side of that. So now we have clearance to fit our two by four or our plywood flooring in there. I really am tempted to just cut that stack out of there because I can always go back with a no hub band and just reattach it. Yeah, let's do that. Let's cut that sucker out of there. All right, so it's cut pretty level with the floor now. It smells horrible. That'd be all right. But now there should be nothing holding me back from sliding that piece of um, plywood in there. So it's come to my attention that I'm gonna have to notch out the bottom of this doorway to get this to work. That's fine, because this needs to be replaced anyways. You can see where my floor ends right there. The door protrudes a little bit, so I'm gonna notch out the bottom part and then Hopefully we'll be able to slide this piece of plywood in there. This is it. I'm done with the floor after this, other than the slide out. But the slide out's just two pieces of wood screwed into the sides. All right, after all that time, the floor, tight fit all the way around. I was able to get it in to where all I have to do is get a hole saw and drill out right where that thing goes down and we'll be able to connect it back there. For there, you just have to drill the holes to drop those lines back down. But I might be, I'm gonna wait off until we get our vanity that we're gonna get. We want something that's about, comes out to, I'd say about right here or so. Because my wife wants to do something in that back corner there for some sort of storage. You know, I mean, it's a small bathroom. You know, I'm standing in here. Toilet's supposed to go right here, as you've seen. There's not a whole lot of room for anything. I mean, you got your bathtub. More, for, I guess you would say more for kids, because, I mean, a grown adult ain't gonna fit in there, other than standing. We're moving right along. I think the last bit of mold and stuff is right here on this door. So we'll rebuild the bottoms of these doors the best that we can, and I think that'll be it for that. And then, of course, you know, that slide. It's gonna be a project all on its own, but it's coming along good. All right, so it's been about an hour since the last part, letting batteries charge and whatnot. The last step here is to secure the floor to the two by fours. And since I screwed the two by fours to this plywood, I now have a template of where my two by fours are. If you're gonna do something like this, I recommend getting a very long extension so you don't have to bend over as much. And this just makes it a lot easier. Using the old faithful drywall screws, never let me down. I'll tell you what, this floor feels more solid. Of course, other than the roof and whatnot. Just try to countersink your screws so that whatever flooring you decide to put in, raised edges. All right, so now that, as you can see, the bathroom floor is all tightened down. And so, to get the idea, there's gonna be a vanity. All it sticks out to about right here. The toilet's gonna be right here. So realistically, the only spot that it's going to be stood on is right here, you know, about that. So, I mean, you're getting in the shower in the back here, and then once our wood flooring, we're going to make it all continuous and have it flow, and then most likely flow right into the bathroom. So, <clears throat> I should, should add some structural integrity. And then I was just watching a few videos on turn this back white. So we'll end up doing that. We're not taking this out. Everything's going to stay. I'm just going to update it. That's coming out though. It's rather pointless. And it smells bad. So that's it for this video. Alright guys, we hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you're just now tuning in to part 10, there are nine other videos. We really hope you enjoy this video and the new angles. Brandon's been working really hard at trying to get better at filming, giving you better angles to see from. And I'll start being in more of the videos once we get more toward like- Interior decorating. Interior stuff, cause that's more me. And there's not really any room in that small bathroom for me to help Brandon. I just sit out here on Sundays and edit. That way we can actually get a video up over every Sunday.
but we hope you enjoyed this video if you did give it a thumbs up don't forget to hit that subscribe button put your bell notification on so you know every time that we post we're really gonna try to stick to posting rv videos every sundays and we're gonna have a different video up on wednesdays so we're gonna start posting twice a week but don't hold us to it <laughs> we're gonna try we will see you guys in our next video bye and now i know my heart is a ghost